Thank you, everyone, uh, for being here to my presentation. Uh, I'm be presenting today uh, a part of the general work we are um, the research we are conducting at the University of Cagliari in cooperation also with other university in Europe. Uh, we it's been a lot, quite a lot of years. I mean, two or three, more than four years because we ended a PhD working on multisensorial media adapted to to broadcast uh, applications to TV application. And today we'll go, I'm going to present what is, uh, in fact, uh, the result of a study, a subjective study test about the impact on the emotion and on the perception of users <coughs> in, uh, in, um, in this uh, particular application. Uh, just to start with, if we think what about our life in uh, 90, about our experience with TV, this could be a good, uh, good example. So we've been, uh, this is a typical uh, 90, wait, 90 uh, <coughs> years uh, living room where somebody was watching in a really cathodic tube uh, TV, old cathodic tube TV, maybe surrounded by using uh, a huge PA to have an ANS audio and a lot of cables, uh, sorry, a lot of cables, a lot of uh, different technologies, uh, what is uh, the ancient ancestral uh, uh, air conditioning system? Something to to live comfortably and uh, to to to, fru uh, to be able to fru to see and to watch relaxing way our content. If we uh, move in what is life now, this is another picture of our life. I mean, we have people uh, staying in a, in a small living room. Everybody has his own uh, uh, device. Everybody is watching the different contents with different, or may maybe the same content with different adaptation. So it's it's a really really big change in 20 years, almost 30 years. You know, uh, many things changes, and uh, so we, we want to. Uh, our study is focusing on uh, what this new technology and the experience of users changes, uh, uh, and how has changed, or how, how much has changed during this uh, the, during this period. For sure, we are in an evolving TV landscape. So now we experience what is what is sorry what is uh, ultra uh, HD TV definition TV. Uh, high dynamic range is uh, a reality because already implemented in new in new TV. Uh, 3D TV is something that sometimes used for a, um, a couple of years ago. It was seems to be a really good um, uh, breaking edge technology, but now now maybe uh, is not. Uh, that way, and other technology like, for example, light field, point clouds, are, are emerging. This is the really future, this is the state of the art of the TV, but we are near also to implement different kind of uh, um, displays, up to holography too. So what was uh, just a movie uh, in, uh, in uh, Star Wars or, or Star Trek uh, series when we came in a room and there are really an holography system where we are immersed in reality, now we are moving to that kind of uh, uh, experience. And uh, this means that we are reacting differently. Our sensing, our brain is reacting differently to, to that. And so we need to study the way uh, to, to design our application in order to be able to, to provide users with the I guess, quality of experience now in this uh, field. For sure, we are also experiencing uh, an another part of our life. We more and more talk about uh, smart environments, uh, smart <coughs> homes, smart cities, and smart living. So we are in a situation where we are sitting on our sofa, but we have, uh, we have display connected, and uh, uh, we are visualizing different, with the same content maybe in different, dis in in different devices, and uh, in, uh, in, in a home that's uh, uh, more and more smart, where devices are connected and can provide is con their contribution also to uh, enrich our global living experience. For sure, we are uh, in a user-centric world. I mean, the user is a king or queen, maybe. Uh, every application designed to fulfill our expectation, to fulfill our equality, to enrich the quality of our, of our experience and our application. So let's see. Uh, for, for, for example, looking at here, we can be uh, uh, moving in a train or we can uh, uh, maybe experience in 3D TV or more uh, virtual reality immersive uh, uh, view. 
everything, everything has to be designed considering the user in the center of all of this. What's new? We are in a, also in a, in, in a time where uh, social networks are more and more pervasive in our life. We are sharing many things. We are sharing video, we are sharing content, we are sharing opinion, and we are asked more and more, and we want maybe express our emotion, react, give our feedback. Uh, so we have uh, at the beginning the, the <laughs> classical Facebook like that become then love, fun, and whatever. So what is the emotion of the user? It needs to be taken into account to develop when we are developing new, new technology. If somebody likes something, we should move to the direction. If somebody dislikes something, maybe we, we, we better end up this uh, field of research. So I mean, there are many, 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 many <coughs> variables we have to take into account. This presentation and our studies uh, from the user perspective. We, we used to, uh, to define the design uh, system is considering the quality of service from the network point of view, which can be broadcasting point of view or internet service provider point of view, maybe maximizing throughput, maximizing uh, uh, bandwidth, uh, but uh, we always don't, we, we never thought about what is the reaction of the, of the user and considering that the users use different devices, different environment, different context to, uh, to, to be, to, to, mm, get the information. And so this has to be taken into account when we develop, we, we develop this kind of uh, uh, technologies. What about experience? Experience in general multisensory. We've been used to uh, watch video and listen audio. There are only two senses. But our brain, maybe now, uh, has grown up since we were a child, just to focusing on these two effects these two senses. And when we, when we do studies, we still perceive this because the, the big impact for a human is the eye <coughs> and then the ear. But other senses also, for example, optic senses or, uh, or sense, smell, scenting sense, are really also important. They can contribute to enrich uh, the experience, to, to the immersion of the user of the experience. Sometimes can be uh, good, they, they can be liked by the, by the user, some like the user can dislike this. And we should take into account uh, all of this when we provide new, new services. The concept of multisensorial media applied and uh, to deliver multisensorial media is quite simple. As you see, in the pr production side, we have the common audio video and we want to add effects. It can be light, temperature, wind, motion, uh, scent, what we want to do is just to define, uh, uh, to add to the audio video another new semantics in order to define, to define the way we went, we went to uh, send this, we want to send this, uh, this uh, kind of new added information. And uh, at the user side, we have a processing terminal able to split the media render with the audio video classical and to add effect. I mean, the way we add effect can be, can be different. We can use, there are a group of research here in, uh, uh, in Europe and also around the world which use dedicated typical uh, uh, devices to produce effect. In, in, our, in, our, cho in our lab, the, we, we, we set up a lab, we try to use what is uh, common devices always present in a common smart home. Our, 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 um, our, paper, our paper, our study is about uh, living experience, the smart home experience. So how to send, a to, to produce, a to reproduce multisensorial media using, using typical uh, customary devices like, for example, light, normal light, uh, fan present, smartphone to the vibration. Uh, uh, same device that we can <coughs> more and more find home when they are in, in a house, they just to clean the room and we can use it to produce different things or the AC typical uh, that we, we find anywhere in a, in a hotel, in a, in, in a smart, in a, in a, in a house. There is a, we are not alone, there is a standardization activity so ongoing on this. The, social, um, maybe say the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers has defined a standard, definition and representation of <laughs> haptic and uh, tactile sounds for broadcast production applications. So they really focus 
on what is broadcast application. Also, the IEEE uh, set up a group, a study group, with in charge the, 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 to define tactile, tactile internet. So I mean, the standard working group, any standard considers the live optic enable broadcast as a use case. So I mean, <coughs> this is something that doesn't seem to be common for a typical TV scenario, but it's not true because people is working is defining also a specific case for broadcast this kind of information. What about different rendering? I mean, f for example, this is an example of what we, we, we did in, uh, in, uh, in our lab in the uh, University of Cagliari in Italy. Uh, for example, we try to control here with an Arduino board the IR signal for a remote control for the AC split to, uh, to, to send uh, uh, to control what is the speed of the fan. We use smart light that commercially available, which are from Philips. We put it in the back of the TV and we use an application, develop an application for iPhone or Android, which in front of the, the TV is able to control directly what is the light uh, reaction to enhance the, the, the visual experience. And uh, we decide to rely on the, what uh, is most common uh, every human has now, so his smartphone, that has the capacity to vibrate. Yeah, the normally we have it uh, in my pocket, and so they can provide us new additional vibration effects without using any specific, specific other uh, devices. We try to set up something that would be a smart living, and when we get in this smart living room, our system, <coughs> our phone can connect to the, to the TV, to the, to the media, to the, to the smart object, and uh, allow us to have uh, an enriched experience. What about live test environment? This is, was a shot of, for example, what is the announcement of the light. The TV is uh, showing a typical 4K video about the Shanghai New Year's uh, Day. And uh, the, the, the smartphone is grabbing the TV and in real time is controlling, piloting what is the, the light behind it. It would change the color to give a really impressive uh, experience of the, of the video. Not only the video of this pink color, but everything become pink. And this is really uh, uh, impacting what is the, the, ex the uh, typical experience of, uh, of a user. To see if uh, this uh, approach is good or not, we could rely on a subjective test. What are subjective tests? Mainly based on mean opinion score. What is mean opinion score? We define some lab. We, uh, we ask people to look at uh, some, uh, some, some view, some, some, some scene, and we ask them to give a score, which can be categorical or numerical. Starting from, the, from collecting this data and analyzing statistically, uh, uh, eliminating what are the outliers, we define a, stat a statistic to, uh, to see if the, uh, the effect we propose, uh, the change we propose is good or not, can be uh, uh, worth implementing or should be discarded, okay? Uh, also here, we didn't invent anything. There are tests and conditional methodologies can be are specified by ITU, both uh, ITU-T, ITU-R, and develop starting from 98 and going through the last one, I think is 2012, last update, that give us the way, the methodology to be full, no? to be followed to for, uh, for uh, developing, uh, for testing uh, uh, this application. According to that, we, we define our, our test layout. Uh, here you can find the, 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 uh, the layout, uh, and there you can find a short, and a short picture of what is, is uh, the, our, our lab implemented. Uh, we have a sofa put at a certain distance, calculate uh, based on the, the previous recommendation. <laughs> We have the UHD TV here 4K. Up to date, we have a splitter which is able to, to send hair flow depending on the, on the content. Behind, we have the camera to the loud, loud effect. And then we use the two mobile phones of the user that they will be sitting here. And the, those the mobile phones will connect to the, to the, to the TV and they vibrate in coordinating with, uh, with the audio and the video uh, that's been shown. Those are the dimensions of, uh, of, uh, of our lab, which is mainly the common dimension of a, of a typical uh, living, living room. 
What about the test material? We try to select different kind of sequences, that w and we add some effect to those sequences. Uh, sequences for different categories, because depending on the category, it can be meaningless to add some effect. Imagine when we are, you are just watching TV and news, the guy is speaking, no, no point to add effect. Different than we are going, for example, seeing a sailing or a skiing uh, sequence where we are going fast, and maybe the airflow there could be enhancing your, your experience. So we define a, a different kind of, uh, uh, we use, we select different kind of sequences, 10 sequences, mainly try to keep them with the same length in order not to, to get the user bored, because when you do those test assessment, the worst thing you can do is just uh, get annoyed and bored the, 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 uh, the assessors that they could, could not react. At the end, they get annoyed. And so if, you, if, you don't, if you're not able to, get, to keep them attention, the, the experiments is, uh, is meaningless. And we add here uh, different effects. And here, this from in the scenario, uh, it's briefly, briefly, briefly described. Uh, L stuff is for lights, A is for airflow, V is vibration. We do not consider scent uh, in, our, in our experiments. We select 40 participants, 31 males, uh, 9 females, various backgrounds, with uh, between uh, 22 and 50 years old, with an average of uh, 32 years old. We provide them a single stimulus continuum quality scale uh, presentation. For instance, we defined uh, S1, S2, S3 are the sequence. V1, V2 as the time when we put green screen five seconds to give them the opportunity, the possibility to, to give their score according to what they, what they see. For, uh, for, for the overall assessment for every participant, each participant <coughs> was about 20 minutes no more than 20 minutes. If we go more than this, it will be really difficult. We uh, asked them to reply to some question. Maybe uh, the survey we, we submitted uh, aimed to assess uh, what is the improvement in the sense of reality. Uh, the, if the sensory effects are distracting, the grade of delight in the fruition of multisensorial media, and uh, the emotional impact of each additional sensory effect. Uh, according to what they uh, uh, reply, we uh, analyze the result and we draw our, our conclusion. Of course, we need first to analyze uh, the data. Score distribution across subjects is normally assumed to be uh, close to a normal distribution. Uh, we need to detect and remove the outliers so the people will give uh, Deep, really strange reply compared to the mean the others, maybe more for the different, uh, different uh, state of mind in, the, in that point. Uh, the minimum pure score and the 95% coefficient interval has been uh, uh, calculated using the uh, typical formula here that uh, is uh, also specified here with every, every single um, component, which is uh, the, the classical uh, uh, formula we use to to extract and to calculate the mean opinion score. We define and we selected eight outliers, and this is the result for every sequence with multisensorial effect of the mean opinion score. As you can see already, in general, you can see that the threshold is high. I mean, if five is the best quality and one is the lowest quality, as you can see, we have above the average. So I mean, you already look at this and say, okay, multisensory is something that really uh, people enjoyed compared to regular audio video. It's, it's, an, it's uh, promising. If you go to look at the ratings, as you can see here, you can see for every sequence, the excellent good are the majorities, which is a confirmation of what I was saying before. So I mean, people in general liked, liked the, the addition of uh, Sensorial, sensorial effect. If you go to look at the survey results, we can see that 85% of the participants agree that the sensorial effects improve the sensoriality, 
Only 10% has a natural opinion, 5% disagree. So I mean, for sure, adding multisensorial effect, stimulating new senses and other senses uh, create an immersive uh, perspective for, for, the, for, the, for the users. Almost finished. Uh, 67.5% uh, of participants were not distracted by the sensory effect and uh, only few have a natural, uh, neutral and, and uh, disc uh, discarded op opinion. 80% of the participants enjoy the multisensorial media. What it means is that it's something that, okay, this is confident, go, go ahead with this kind of operation. If you look at, for example, every single effect, look at the light effect, the percentage of people that agree, strongly agree, the effect and answer reality uh, is the majority. Also, if you go to see the distraction part, no, almost nobody said, okay, we are distracted. Same thing for the light effect, uh, annoying. Nobody said it's annoying, it's really good. It is really good for, for uh, typical, for, because we are used to watch things. But also if you go for optic effect, for example, our flow. You can see, may, most of the people say that this is an ass, really, the, our, our uh, our sense of reality. Uh, nobody almost said this is, is, uh, is annoying. Uh, what about the vibra vibration effect? This is, is a more controversial because the way we provide the, 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 the vibration effects is about using mobile phone. Mobile phones are not used, designed to do that. <coughs> and according where people put the mobile, it could be annoying. If you put it in here, maybe you have a sensation. If you put it in your pocket, other one. So we need to work on this and define better place to do this. Uh, I'm going fast. Uh, those are the challenges ahead. And so we, we, I would say, we need to work on vibration, and uh, it's really important where to put where to put the vibration things. Uh, other thing is, most of the CC complain about the the distance now with the with the with the TV and the lighting effect. This is because normally all the recommendation were um, <laughs> defined when the the size of the screen was small. And now we are going huge and huge in the screen. And so putting a screen, putting people really close to the screen and putting on the back lights could be some kind of scaring or distracting instead of enjoying. So maybe the, also the recommendation, they should, they should be uh, revised and we should be redefined to see and uh, to look at also for geometrical uh, different position of the, of the TV and the sofa in order to, to, to come uh, uh, to overcome this kind of uh, uh, problem. Also for the airflow, it depends from the distance of the airflow. Maybe the fan is not powerful enough to provide good and uh, massive uh, <coughs> airflow. It's better to use it only when we, we can provide uh, uh, light, light effects in this case. I'm done. Mm -hmm.